Hello everyone. Welcome to Sales for Sisters. Today we are going to talk about if you have to write a business requirement document for Salesforce case management, what all it should include. I'm going to just talk about the brief details, the pointers that you need to talk about. But when you write the business requirement document, it has to be in proper definitions, context, and all the detail in paragraphs so that the person who is receiving this document can understand the before and after of the document. So let's begin. For the business requirement document, if you have a project called Salesforce Case Management, you must know the team name, the team that you are working with and the one that's going to use the case that you are going to create in future. Some of the important information that you need to collect from business stakeholder group is what's going to be the case name. Make sure that you also provide your inputs about the name if they are using acronyms in the case name. Is it clearly understandable to all the teammates? What is this case about? Is MSD, assuming here for the sake of document, global MSD, is MSD a well-known acronym? If not, then it's wise to use the case record type or the case name as Global Merchant Support Team. And then how would the case be created? Do they need to create the case via email to case? Do they need it only web to case? Or the Salesforce internal users should be able to create the case from Salesforce by clicking the new button. It's not necessarily that we have to choose one, but for the sake of the document today, we will be just taking one option, which is email to case. So the requirement is, what is that email ID for which the business is going to receive the cases in Salesforce? So the requirement is anytime someone sends an email to a particular team email ID, for example, global merchant support at salesforce.com, the case should get created and the team should be able to work on it. So we are going to take this as an example. And then who are the people who are going to manage the queue? Once the case gets created in Salesforce, it's going to go to a queue. So who is going to manage that queue that assigns those cases to the team further to start their review? Well, if there is a queue, then that queue has to be named. So because it's for the internal team, the queue, so we are good to use acronyms here as per the team's convenience. We can have for global merchant support, global GMS queue. If it's for all global teams, we can call it global. If we are going to further have regional teams taking care of the cases, then we need to have GMSQ North America, GMSQ APEC, GMSQ EMEA, etc. So it's very important to understand who, are, who is going to man the queue there. And then further, who are the team members? Those who are going to access the queue, who are the team members? So we can create the list views for those individual team members if required. Or, no, or if not, give them the access to the queues so they can also see the cases once they are assigned to them. Then what are the service level agreements? Uh, first of all, what is a service level agreement? It's, it's a commitment by the team that they are going to work on these cases and they will be closing and completing the reviews maybe within one day, two day, week, month. It, it could be anything as per business process. So what are the SLAs? And you need to figure that out because there, there might be need to add some automations based on the SLAs. Next requirement is a bit more detailed and it is about what are the fields that you want to add on the case. Fields are basically what are the different values that you will need while reviewing the case. So I'm going to be adding that information in a bit more detail in next video. Keep watching this Salesforce user story series with Salesforce sisters. Thank you.